I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so excited today to be welcoming back Midori Francis to our series to talk all about her latest role in Grey's Anatomy. And um, I wanted to start by talking about the self-tape that you did because it was a self-tape audition initially. And as someone who's been such a fan of this show and, you know, was watching it from the, the initial conceptualization and from yeah. the beginning every week, how did that give you such a sense of how you wanted to approach this character? Because obviously you don't always have that many details going into that stage of the process but since there were years worth of a series that also gives you a whole world to build around totally well I think so the um the being a fan thing is true but you know how when you say something in an interview and then it gets doubled down and tripled down and quadrupled down and then it spirals um so basically and we just I was, perpetuated it again <laughs> no no it's okay but this is great this is why these kind of forums are great because you actually we can actually talk um so I was a big fan, like in middle school, late middle school when it aired and when everyone was talking about it, like those first few seasons. And then I fell off the show. So when I got, I basically got a call from my agent and he was like, listen, uh, Grey's Anatomy is casting uh, the role of a new intern. They're looking at a handful of actors and you're one of them. So I already knew that the producers were like aware of my work, you know, that they had specifically inquired about me, which is always like a check on the box of like, will I go out for this or not? Just because it's always a good sign when the people making the thing have a specific interest in you, um, especially where I was at at the time, which is being a little more selective about what I go out for. Um, and so when I got the, the, that call, there was something about it. I don't know. I think it's because of those first few years. Like it was so iconic and I remember it just being such good television and uh, the idea that they were kind of doing this rebirth and I might be a part of it. It felt really right. And something about me got really excited. Like I was like, I was like, oh, cool. Grey's Anatomy. And I put a lot of work into my tape. I did it with my friend. You know, we played around with it. I got like a little outfit that resembled the doctor that wasn't quite scrubs. But I always know whenever I put that much effort into something, clearly there's something about it that I care about. So that was exciting. Um and yeah, I think I had these sort of distant memories of the tone of the show that I remembered. I remembered it being very natural, grounded, funny, crisp, um, dark. And so I, yes, I, it was all very instinctual, like just from what my gut remembered and and felt and, and I went for it. I love that. And and it yeah. sounds like it's a space where Krista Vernoff, who's the showrunner and, and the writers are kind of able to give more details beyond the scripts a lot of the time, um, and especially coming in and playing a new character, I'm sure that they have an entire arc mapped out and, and whether they can give you that full arc or not when you're stepping into a role like this, um, what were some of the conversations or details that they were able to give you to really guide how you were building this character? Because you know it's, it's that essence where, especially because there's five new interns being introduced, we're getting little details episode by episode and it's gradually yeah. the world of them. Yeah, I think so for me specifically, I know some interns had more of a specific arc and specifically tied into the plot. Mine was a little less like that. Mine was a little bit more keyword character thing. So I kind of went into my writer's meeting. The first time I really learned about who Mika was going to be officially um, was in the deadline article because they they gave a breakdown of a few keywords. It was like scrappy, confident. Um and then I went into the writer's room and they told me, you know, she was funny. She was sleeping. Oh, yes. She, they said that she was sleeping in a van, steeped in student loans. Um, but really, they were just clues. I really just had clues. And so it was essentially a leap of trust on my part to be like, all right, here's my little book of information. Now I have to fill it out and make a map for myself and just take a leap of faith that we're going to get somewhere. Um and I've been excited because as the episodes roll out, I'm starting to see the pattern of how they flesh each of us out. You know, it's I think it's hard to balance so many different characters, new and original in, in each episode. So I'm starting to see like, all right, one person gets their time here and then a person gets a little less time here. Or, you know, sometimes you're of service for the beeline or sometimes you're here for the comedy or, you know, and and um, yeah, we're on episode eight now filming. So. That's amazing. And and with that as well, does that does that kind of require you to make very 
very distinctive choices, but very fluid choices for her as you're building her, because, you know, even just a line of, oh, I have seven sisters that could instigate so many different things about her home life and her upbringing and her world. And, and it's one of those things where five episodes now, three seasons from now, there could all of a sudden be a huge detail that's very different to maybe what you've conceptualized. Yes. Yeah. I think that it requires the actor to build a world behind those, those few descriptors and honestly commit to it. And whether or not it's like right or wrong, I think it's more important that you commit because being sort of in between anything to me doesn't read as anything. And I think that as long as I have a reason, like for example, you know, the first few episodes, I'm just especially annoyed by Blue and um, Skywalker, who I call uh, Lucas, Lucas Adams. Um, And he says he doesn't want to be called Skywalker and I immediately call him Skywalker. And so I just notice this pattern where I'm just like so annoyed with both of them. And I'm, I'm really not too mean to the other female interns, but I'm just like such a jerk to them. And, and I'm like, so I had to find my own reasons for that. You know, um, you know, in my head, it was because they're both, you know, in, you know, wealthier and nepotism and they're good looking guys. And, and in my, in Mika's head, they can get whatever they want easily. And they're, you know, or, or, you know, and so I think, and especially I, I made the choice that because um, Skywalker's character is sort of like, oh, I'm here, I'm a doctor, whatever, you know, that that especially would annoy someone like Mika, who's like working so hard and is saddled in debt and literally living in her van to be here every day. And somebody's just acting like that. So anyway, so you take these little clues, like I'm a jerk to these guys and I don't want it to be random and I don't want it to not feel authentic. So then I create a story for why I feel that way. And the thing is, is you're right in a season, I could get something that totally contradicts that, but I think it's better to commit and to find reasons for yourself. Um, And then I think also the writers kind of get inspired by what you bring and some of it weirdly starts seeping in, you know? I think that's amazing. And you were mentioning before and touching upon her sense of humor, which is such a central part of of her right from the very beginning. You know, she makes a joke that's just not received (laughs) for an entire day over it. Yeah. Um, But you kind of see her starting to navigate, okay, this is a moment where it's okay to still be funny. This is a moment where I need to pull back and kind of, where is it going to come forward for me? And then a lot of it's even just in the looks, there's a lot of kind of sly and subversive looks, like you said about the the moments where she's just very frustrated and annoyed by the guys. Yeah. Um, And so for you, how did you work to really build out not even just the dialogue of what that comedic delivery was going to look like but how that was really going to be seeped into her throughout well the funny thing is about the comedic aspect is one of the things that excited me about this role I was like what a great switch for me like to go from these sort of like shiny projects to something more like medical and dramatic I was like I can't wait to just cry and then I get on this show and I'm like the comedic relief so much of the time (laughs) I'm like cool cool um but it's it's been a joy honestly and I think that um, for me, in terms of the nonverbal stuff, I mean, I always think of it like, you know, my job as the actor is to fill in the how, right? Like, so let's say the gap, like the scene at the end when we're on the gurneys, it's like, we're all exhausted and the camera's panning to us, but like how each of us are exhausted, that's up to us as the actor to paint that picture. So I played around with a million different things. I had the popcorn, I was falling asleep one take, I was yawning. And then the popcorn just started happening as I was like, Debbie Allen, our director, I didn't know if she liked it, like whether it was too much, because in the end, like all the popcorn came out and I started and I was like, is this too much? But then she said, I didn't do it one take. And then she goes, I like all she says is I like to see you struggle, Midori. And so I was like, OK, cool. So she likes when I'm struggling with the popcorn and then I kept doing it. So for I just always think like, yeah, it doesn't matter whether you're speaking or not, but like that's your job when you have those spaces to fill in the story. Like, how are you filling, filling them? And it's important to know what your point of view is. You know, someone walks in late. Do I like that? Do I dislike that? You know, someone makes a joke. Do I think it's funny? Do I not think it's funny? You know, uh, someone says there's a new uh, competition to scrub in on a surgery. Am I excited about it? Am I thinking I'm not good enough for it? Like, I, that's my job to like decide what my point of view is in all those moments and to play it and to, and then the editor can look and choose what they like. Yeah. And going back yeah. to what you were saying as well about, you know, for her, this is this is something that she's worked so hard mm-hmm. and, and sacrificed so much to be where she is, you know, literally living out of a van and and struggling financially and, you know, maybe even working jobs on the side outside yeah. of 
residency. Um, it's also really refreshing to see her as someone who is so confident in herself yes. as well. Like when there's the conversation that the interns are all having about, well, where does the class of reject? She's like, I don't see myself that way. Yeah. Um, and was that something that really came forward for you at the beginning of the scripts? Or was that something that you really saw kind of going back to what you were saying about just like the key words in her? Key word. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's funny you said confidence. Sometimes I forget that one, but that's been there since the beginning that she's confident. And so I, I try and remember it. It's sort of a really weird thing to play confidence. Um, you kind of start to have to play with your psychology of like, what does that even mean? And like, I always use myself first. So I'm like, all right, when are times when I feel confident, when I'm talking to a friend about something I know about, whatever. And then you start tapping into those states of mind. But um, yeah, I, I'm trying my best to have a certain level of confidence run through her the entire time. Um, and obviously that's challenged, you know, if she's giving, um, uh, what, oh, in episode two, I got to do a procedure and I had no idea what I was doing, you know? Um, but even then I tried to give her a strength, um, about her. Yeah. No. And I, that, that scene that you're referencing, which is intubating someone, I really yeah. loved that we saw the vulnerability yeah. and that we allowed the uncertainty to be on the surface rather than, you know, pretending and making a mistake. And, and have you found it kind of fairly straightforward from the scripts to really understand where that vulnerability, that nervousness, that uncertainty is going to be allowed to come forward for her? Or do yeah. you think she's also masking it at times a lot? I think that, yeah, I think she's masking it because I think I, what I've noticed is when she's around the other interns, she's very confident and maybe that's some posturing, but very rarely is in that state of vulnerability. But when I'm around, when Mika's around a lot of the superiors, like the attending, she tends to be a bit more vulnerable or unsure. So I've just leaned into that dichotomy. And also as an actor, there's a part of it that like, you know, the writers write something and you kind of just go with it. So part of me always worries, like, am I creating a character that's too, too, um, too many things, you know, or is this going to all come together as one real person? But um, I just have to trust, you know, that the scenes where she's written to be sassy and confident, I'll commit to that. The scenes where she's vulnerable and awkward and, and nervous, I'll commit to that. And hopefully they somehow come together as this one person. Um, but it's a lot of trust and it's, it's sort of scary. I think, especially because I've come from the world of streaming where, you know, it's more, it's more laid out for you. This is the first time I felt kind of like I'm jumping off a roller coaster of like, wow, I really, I don't, I don't know fully who she is, but I hope that, um, I hope we, I hope she comes across as somebody real. <laughs> I mean, that that's such an interesting point as well of, of you know, the, the difference in working in network television and not having all of the details up front because it's yeah. not these and arc of scripts that you're getting. Um, but did you find that, that as a result of that, that there's actually a lot of personal elements that you were able to bring into this character because she's in a completely new space. You know, she's had all of this training and experience in another space, but kind of there's certain aspects that nothing can prepare you for. And so there's, there's an ability to kind of bring your own uncertainty into certain scenes with her as a character. Oh, absolutely. I think even the intubation scene that you're referencing one of the takes, one moment from it that they used was me as the actor messing up. I um, I had the device this way. See, I already forgot what it's, it's so many episodes ago. I had all of that language so, scope, it's the scope. I had that language so great, but now it's gone from my head. Um, So I had the scope this way as the actor, me, Midori. And then I was like, crap. And I was like, sorry. And they actually used that, like me doing that. So yeah, I mean, I was talking to Anthony Hill. He's been on the show for three years now. He plays um, Dr. Ndugu. And he was saying he started as a surgeon. So he had to come into this new cast and this new show and like act like he knew what he was doing. And the great advantage that we, us five all have is that like we get to actually come in and our experience mirrors our actual characters. Like they don't really know what they're doing. I mean, they have a wealth of knowledge that we don't have like med school. But um, I was talking to one of my friends, Caitlin, who's a doctor, and she was saying that like the crazy thing about graduating from med school and your first year is like you think you know a lot of things in med school and then you get to the hospital, uh, you know, you're being an intern and you actually realize you know nothing about how the actual day to day works, how to talk to people, how to actually do these things that you've only been reading about. So a lot of that uncertainty and nervousness, awkwardness, mistakes, like, yeah, we can bring our own energy to match that. Um, and that, and, and so I think we have a huge advantage, honestly, we're lucky in that way. 
And it's really lovely to watch when she is talking to a patient's family member and she really actually just finds herself giving so much of herself, you know, and she talks about her sister and is like, you know, I'm emotionally invested in your daughter and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to spend time thinking about this and hoping for you. Yeah. Um, you know, and I thought that was really, really beautiful. Do you think that that was something where she had any idea of how she was going to navigate situations like that or that for her it was very much in the moment just really finding what that felt like for her because again like you said it's it's all the training but nothing can prepare you until you have to do something like that yeah I love that moment too and I was surprised actually when I watched it because in the script it doesn't read as a huge moment but then in the episode it really read I felt and landed and especially like the contrast between her making all these kind of jokes and just stepping in it and not taking it seriously and then to see that and I think it was more in the moment something I'm learning about Mika and you'll see as the series goes on is like everything is very in the moment for Mika she speaks before she thinks. And I think that that was a time where she had already stepped in it. You know, I know what that feels like. And her, uh, you know, this Amelia Shepard, um, this amazing neurosurgeon is basically like, you know, calls her out in front of everyone and is like, you know, what are you doing? Why are you making these jokes? These are actual people. And I've definitely been in that position before where I like make that kind of joke or whatever. And, I'm, and then somebody corrects me and I'm like, I don't even know why I said that because I do take this seriously. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm so much better than what I just did. And then you're mad at yourself and you're mad at the person who, and you just, you know, you're doing a pity party. And, and what's cool though, is that instead of her going down that route, she like changed her day very quickly. I think, cause she was forced to, you know, that's what's, that's what I love about this show is like, you're forced to be in these extraordinary circumstances. I mean, when else would a person have to look inside a mother's eyes whose daughter is in a coma, you know? And so then like, because of this extraordinary circumstance, I think because she made the mistake, she's like, all right, what am I going to do in this moment? I'm going to actually try. I'm going to have hope. And she rose to the occasion. And I think proved herself as a compassionate doctor. Um, I think with what you're saying as well about, you know, she chooses not to stay seeped in that moment of, of criticism that yeah. she turns it around um, is prevalent in so many different ways. Like even when we first see the van that she's sleeping in and she's like, yeah, like I've made it really homey. I've installed Wi-Fi, And yeah. so do you also really see her as someone who no matter what the situation is and no matter what the obstacle that faces her, that she's always kind of, how can I turn this around? How can I make the best out of this situation? Whatever it is. Yeah. She's scrappy. She's a survivor. <laughs> and I really love that about her. <laughs> And with the group dynamic as well, you know, again, that that's a space where there's a parallel where the five of you are com coming in together and, and building your dynamic off screen at the same time that you're building it on screen. Um, and what have you found is the balance of competitiveness and camaraderie? Because these are the these are the only people that know exactly what it's like to be in this situation. And so there's that close tight knit element that we see already building between them. And at the same time, you know, when they're trying to answer a question, they all want to be the first person with their hand up getting to be first in. Yeah. Well, Krista, our showrunner, came up to us two days ago and said, you guys are having so much fun. And we could tell when we watched the dailies. And I was like, oh, I hope not too much fun. But I think it's true. I mean, we really have formed this bond that is um, authentic and exciting. And we love hanging out with each other. Um, I like to think that you can only be like nasty to each other on screen or be ugly. Like, let's face it, nobody wants to watch a TV show where everyone's just acting like a saint all the time. Like the whole point of um, like TV and film, it's to see ourselves reflected and to like get to see the messy parts and the, the not so nice parts and feel like, oh, we're not alone in that or laugh at ourselves or see it reflected, you know? So what I love is I think it takes like a true trust to be able to act that way. You know, like sometimes I just give um, Harry Shum, I give him the dirtiest looks like during when we're filming, like I'm like, Ugh. or sometimes we nudge each other, but it's only with a deep trust and respect that you can actually do that. Because if you don't have that, you're especially, you know, you don't know, you're worried you're going to offend someone or like, they're going to not like what you did. So it's like, I just love that so much that we built this trust of like, it's okay to try things. It's okay to, you know, do different things each take. And, um, you know, when we just did episode four is really fun. The uh, four of the five of us are like, stuck on this um sort of project let's call it and we all as the actors were like in between takes we're like all right what if we try this what if we try this um so it's really fun and then in yeah. terms of, some of the medical side of the show I wanted to ask about medical boot camp that you first went on with Linda <laughs> Klein and Michael Metzner who are her nurses that are working on the show and obviously yeah. 
you know, from the writer's room to on set, there's, there's so many people working to make sure that everything has that level of, of authenticity. And so, especially going into those first couple of episodes and finding that space, like you were saying, where she has a certain element of training, but there's still things that she doesn't know. And what does that look like when you're actually yeah. in the hospital with patients? Um, how did the two of them in particular really help you finesse and figure out that space for her? Yeah, by the way, Linda and Michael are also both actors on our show. And Linda sometimes directs the show. I mean, Grace, it's such a it's such a wild ride. Like the because it's been around for so long. Like a lot of the a lot of our directors are married to some of the actors, or you know, like or like like I said, sometimes Linda is our medical advisor. Sometimes she's our director. Sometimes she's in a scene with us as Nurse Linda. So it's very trippy um, and very cool. But um, it was awesome. We had like a few sessions with them. We still have them periodically, and we learned the first day was overwhelming. I think because we were all a bit like, wait, do we actually have to know how to do this? Like a hundred percent. And then the more we settled in, it's like, no, it's okay if you make mistakes, you know, but we, uh, you know, everything from taking a stethoscope and learning the pattern of the Z on the heart to blood pressure, to, um, intubation, chest compressions. I mean, we were really learning the pattern of how to do it. Um, I like to think that I could do chest compressions if, if I really needed to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously, you know, there is, there's so much technical language, you know, I know that after we talk today, you've got a whole script to to navigate for tomorrow. Um, but I loved that, that Chandra, who plays Miranda Bailey on the show, was kind of giving you and the, the other new cast, like a lot of advice or even just like rhyming details for retaining it and learning it. Um, yeah. How did that kind of make you feel more comfortable with those moments where you're filming a scene, you're delivering so much of that, and there's always going to be moments where something's going to something's going to trip you up. There's always going to be yeah. a take that doesn't go perfectly, and to realize that someone like her, who's been on the show for as many years as she has, is still having to really consciously think through it and create these tools for herself. Like, did that did that change a lot of the landscape of how it felt going into scenes and having to deliver a lot of technical aspects? Definitely. I think it just relaxed everything. And, you, you know, I think for me too, I always get tricked by TV and film. Like I look at a show and I'm like, oh, they're doctors. Like, cause they do it so well. And then I show up and I'm just assuming that all of them know everything about how to be a doctor and like all of the lingo. And it's actually like, no, you know, they're still actors and they still have to work hard at this. And you know, it's okay if you pronounce it stylet instead of stylet or whatever. I probably just did that wrong. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think it just relaxed me. It's like chill, you know, like it's, it's okay. And um, you're going to make mistakes, you know? Um, but I think it's that, it's that newbie energy of coming in, especially in the beginning. And you really want to prove that like, you can do this and you've done your homework and, and you should never lose that by the way of that, that work ethic. But I think that a healthy balance of also having, you know, a relaxed attitude towards mistakes is, is also very good. And obviously airing wise, you know, we're just going into the third episode of the season, but like you said, production wise, you're already on episode eight. Yeah. What's, what's some of the level of just like confidence and and calmness that you feel that's different from when you stepped into the first episode being this far through the season already? Yeah, it's all right. It's like night and day. I mean, in a way, I think it's funny because a lot of the projects I've done have taken about three months, you know, like Dash and Lily was three months. Sex Lives was four or five months. The movie I just did on scene was two months. And you always notice from the beginning of that period to the end, you know, you step on and everything feels foreign to you and you don't know what your place is or if you belong there. And by the end, you're like, hey, guys, what's up? And it's funny because I've started filming Grey's in July. And it's already been that amount of time. So that's that's what's weird is this is going to go on for so much longer than other things I've worked on. Um, but I can already tell that ease is there and that feeling of, you know, I know a little bit of my place now. And yeah. That's really amazing. And I love hearing that and was so thrilled for you when I saw the casting announcement of this and Aww. love hearing how, how great of an experience it's been working on the show and can't wait to watch the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know I'm so excited to see what happens. I have no idea.